we're in this series and we're talking really about, I've really kind of honed in on this word frequency, frequency, and that there are, that we're a frequency and what, what are we, our, what is our frequency and in training into? Um, and there's a kingdom, it's called the kingdom of God. And you don't see this kingdom and yet you do see this kingdom. You see the fruit of the kingdom, even though you don't necessarily see borders or uh, titles uh, listed at borders. There is a kingdom. We are the kingdom of God. Do you believe that we are the kingdom of God? No, no question. Um, but let me take you back a couple of hundred years before the radio existed. Because there are corners of the church, Christian church, that would believe that the Lord isn't speaking anymore, that you maybe have been taught that the Bible is the word, which it is, but it's the only word. And if you want to hear from God, it has to come out of here. God isn't really speaking anymore, which I disagree with completely. And I'll explain why in a moment. I believe that God speaks to his bride. And I believe that there are there is a kingdom that you cannot see, but that exists, that there's a supernatural realm that exists. Now, let me take you back to this illustration of the radio. If, if before there was a radio, I came in here, and, and this is going to be hard to do because you're familiar with it. Before that ever was discovered, that, that, that sound could travel through air and visibly through air. Before all of that, if I came to you and I said, do you know the worship team that was up here? I can actually put that sound in your moving car. And you said, that's impossible. Not unless the whole band gets in the car. Can you imagine what that was like in the Flintstone era? They had the whole band in their car, right? There was a great need for bands back then if you want to listen to music. And you said, there's no way you could do that. And I said, oh, yeah, there is. See, this is what will happen. They will sing in a little device that doesn't even have a chord. And when they sing in that device, it will go to a board in the back that actually puts it into a system that turns it into waves that can go anywhere for miles and miles and miles and can reach little dinky boxes in moving vehicles. You know what you'd tell me? You're crazy. Am I right? You would have told me I'm crazy. So if you're telling me today that I'm crazy because there is a kingdom you cannot see, that God in his presence is here right now, you go ahead and tell me crazy, but you would have also been the one who told me crazy. I was crazy about the radio. And I guess, guess what? You use it all the time. Does that make sense? So in Luke 8, it says this. He who has ears, let him hear. Let him hear. See, God is in this place. The Holy Spirit is moving. He is speaking. He's just waiting for your ears to hear. He's waiting for your ears to hear. The theme verse, uh, do you have a receiver or are you a radio for the kingdom of God? Listen, 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 please listen. Where are you? What are you receiving? You are a receiver of something. What are you receiving? You need to take captive anything that you're receiving that isn't life-giving and make it obedient to the life, Jesus Christ. Right? Because it will, it will cause you to be a, re a rebel, a rebellion. Remember when Peter was going to lead the rebellion and he cut off the ear of the soldier and Peter said, Jesus said to Peter, we're not leading a rebellion here, Peter. It, it seemed right to Peter, but it wasn't right. We are a receiver. We are receivers to the kingdom of God. We are the people that know there's a supernatural realm that exists to a people who are dead people walking out there. We are the receiver of heaven to speak life to people who aren't receivers. You are a radio in the kingdom of God. You're a radio. What frequency, what channel are you, are you broadcasting to the people around you? I, I really want you to capture that in John chapter 10. 
which is our theme verse of this part of Frequency Series. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, but the sheep and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. They know his voice. But look at their two voices. They're the voice of the shepherd, but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Um, this is God is the shepherd in this story, and we are the sheep. But it's interesting to look at this. Look at this. Not every, not every open door has been opened by God. Not every open door has been opened by God. And not everybody who says they're a Christian is, is speaking for God. Too many times we say, oh, I made that decision because it was just an open door. But did you hear God tell you go through the door? Satan opens doors to destruction. And there are times if you say the open door is the... Is the 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 catalyst for me to make a decision friend you're making a huge mistake because open doors and closed doors are not the catalyst to our decision god wants us to hear his voice he wants us to know what he, where he's leading he he says go back to the beginning of that verse in john let's go all the way back the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and what does he do leads them out through the door where is he leading is what you want the, the gate can open but if he's not leading you out you shouldn't go out you should stay in and we're we're speaking we have a speaking god he's speaking to you you know there there are a number of people who say yeah i heard from god and he he told me that i should leave my wife and quit my job and and uh and uh, just start dating around all over the place. Well, that's probably not God, right? Uh, the, God's word that you hear that he speaks to you is going to line up with his word. God's word is not like our word. It never contradicts. So if he speaks something to you and it contradicts a word uh, in the word of God, then it isn't God, that you, you're not hearing God in the way that you need to hear God. You know, how many believe that we have a personal relationship with God? So, so he wants to talk with you in a personal way. Uh, um, and I want to tell you why and how he's going to do that. But I want to use a, a, a quote by a famous writer in the church. His name is Dallas Willard. He says, if God doesn't speak today, then the greatest disservice we could ever do to people is to tell them that they could have a personal relationship with God. You cannot have a personal relationship with God if you're not on speaking terms. It leads us, it leads us to, to the understanding that it is almost impossible to have a personal relationship with God if we are not on speaking terms. Think of any relationship in your life, any at all. And if you say, yeah, I know so-and-so, but we're not in speaking terms. How many of you would say they had a personal relationship with God? If you're not on speaking terms, you really have a stress-strained or tense relationship with that person, right? Wouldn't you just assume that if, if someone said that? Or if you said we're not really on speaking terms, no one's going to go, oh, they got a personal relationship. It's really a good relationship. They said they, were on not, they weren't on speaking terms. Right? That would have sounded absurd. You can say amen. That lets me know you're listening and still there. We, we really need to have a clearer picture of God. Religion gives extremely flawed descriptions of God. Not just Islam or Buddhism, but forms of Christianity gives a flawed uh, vision of who God is. God sent his son on the cross so that he could be personal with you have a personal relationship with you. So I've heard people say, well, you can, you can be saved and not pray. Sure, but you won't. Sure, 
because you're saved by believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth. But if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you're going to want to talk to them. It, that may be true in one point, but then we walk around thinking that it's all settled and we walk without the one we, be, we say we believe in. Those are the fruits of knowing you're saved is the fact that I want to talk to them. I want a relationship with God. I want to be in relationship with God. He wants relationship with you. If you think about Moses, he said, Moses was a friend of God, right? And Moses, at one point in his life, he gets to this place and he's in this, and I kind of always assumed it was a cave, and he's in this cave and Moses is saying, God, I want to see your face. And God says, no, Moses, I can't show you my face, but, but I'm going to do miracles for you and I'm going to do signs, wonders for you and I'm going to do all of these blessings for you, Moses. That's what I'm going to do for you, Moses. Moses says, I don't want that stuff anymore. I don't want that anymore. I want to see you. And see, there's a point where Jesus came and died on the cross so you could see him. But we want the blessing. We want all the signs and wonders. We're like, God, that's okay. I don't need to hear your voice. Just bless me. Just do signs, wonders, and miracles in my life. That's all I want, God, is for you to do this. But when you become a friend of God, you're not, you're not content with that anymore. See, Moses wanted to see his face because he knew his voice. You cannot pursue his face until you learn to hear his voice. Because it's in hearing his voice that it causes your heart to long to see his face and to be face to face. There are too many, too many teenagers that we've raised in the church and we've taught them that God is faithful, God is faithful, God is faithful, and he is. But they assume that's just for blessing. And when I'm in trouble, he's going to bail me out. But this is a relationship. Friend, that in and of itself is only religion. It's not a relationship. Too many of our kids have never learned to get off of getting into speaking terms with their Savior. Parents, the number one thing you can teach your kids is not how to ba bounce a basketball. It's not how to kick a soccer ball. It's not how to do a dance. The number one thing you can teach your kid is not how to handle their finances and not how to do their schoolwork. The number one thing, the primary thing we must teach our kids is how to communicate with their God. There are some people that communicate better with their pets than they communicate with their Savior. Well, I don't know how to pray. I saw you talk to that dog. You even put words in his mouth. You, not only did you talk to your pet, your pet was talking back to you through your own voice, right? We can, we, we can interact with our God. We need to hear our God. God's voice, after a while, will draw us into a deep, deeper desire with God. Here's why. God speaks. Matthew 1.23 says, The virgin will conceive and give birth to his son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. God sent Christ to earth so that God could not only be God in, in the universe, but he was God on earth. He's God through his son, Jesus Christ. His nickname was Emmanuel because he wanted to be with us. God speaks to facilitate friendship. He wants to be your friend. But how is he going to be your friend if you won't talk to him? If you won't communicate with him, you won't have interaction with him. God speaks to facilitate this relationship in Exodus 30. It says the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. This is where I, I mentioned earlier where I said uh, we find some people find it easier to pray to their dog, cat, or pet than they do to their God. I'm a list maker. Any list makers in here? You make a list about everything. And, uh, and we, we all know that's the best way to approach life is through lists, right? We make lists of all the lists that we need to make. Heather throws away more of my lists, but, but if I'm going to get stuff done, I need a list, right? I got to write it all down because, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. 
And uh, how many list? Uh, no, come on, list makers. You should be saying amen. Don't let your mask. Amen. Let everybody else know in the room. I'm preaching truth right now. Um, but oftentimes when we go to prayer, our conversation with God is full of lists. We don't really leave room, one, to hear God's voice. We kind of set the agenda. We tell God, okay, God, I got my list. I'm going to pray through. And so prayer for us has often been my, my list. And there's nothing wrong with making petitions before the Lord. The Bible says to do that. But sometimes we believe prayer begins and ends with my list. I start praying from the most important thing that I need to pray for all the way down to the bottom of my list. And I go, hey, hey God, it was great talking to you. It's good talking to you wherever you are. God, you're behind me. Wherever you are, God. I'm done. Amen. Take care of that, God. And what that comes back to is this whole thing of where Moses was at, where he says, I'm tired of you just meeting my list. And he does. God will do incredible things. But God, I think God's sitting there going, how many enjoy being around people that don't let you talk? Isn't God gracious? Sometimes we need to just shut up. And hear so that we can listen. Because God wants to speak. Prayer sometimes isn't doing anything at all. But listening and then responding to what God puts into your heart and your mind, responding to that to hear what he says back. I know um, when, some, we had the, when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit and you hear people speaking in tongues, you think, well, the Holy Spirit is actually making their tongue go, blah, 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 you know, in your mouth. It's actually what's happening is the Holy Spirit, when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, God puts this in your mind and you begin speaking what is literally coming out of your mind. Like you're, you're speaking. The Holy Spirit isn't making you speak. Anything. Like literally there are words that come in and you're just speaking what, what is flowing into your mind from your spirit man into your soulish man out of your physical man. That's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit does. It goes from your spirit man through the mind, which is your soul, into your physical body and out your tongue. Does that make sense? So God speaks, uh, God speaks because he facilitates friendship. Here's the second thing God speaks to do. He gives guidance. God speaks to give guidance. Proverbs 3 says in this verse we mentioned last week, listen for God's voice in everything you do. That pretty much means everything, right? And where else? Is, and everywhere you go, that doesn't really leave much room for anything else, right? He's the one who will keep you on track. You want, if you want to be wise, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you will seek him and pursue him and ask him, he will give you wisdom beyond your years. Beyond your years. Um, you know, I, I was watching something on, I don't remember even where it was, but it was uh, a military thing, and they were talking about the eyes in the sky. And they were talking about how did they had to get a person out of this place, and they had drones and satellites or stuff in place, and all on these screens in a room back in the United States, they were in the Middle East. The, this military group of people were in the Middle East, and the people who were in their ear were in like Arizona. Okay, and they're in a dark room and they're communicating to these people in the Middle East and they got to get a guy out of this, this, this military setting or war type setting. And they're, in, they're standing at a corner and the people in Arizona, because they can see from the sky where all of the, 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 the opposing military people are, they're like, go there and stop. Wait, wait, wait. Now take a left, take a right. And they literally walked, they're in Arizona, they walked this military through this whole thing with all these soldiers because they could see where all the, the enemy or opposing soldiers were at so they could get right to the place they needed to and walk out of there with the person and nobody knew they were there. Because there's eyes in the sky. You have eyes in the sky. But if you don't have the earpiece in, you're going to get killed. 
you're going to get shot. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get, you're going to have someone do, you're going to end up in trouble because you're not listening. And God can walk you through very tense things and keep you on track if you're listening to that, what, what I'm saying, that still, small voice. My dad, when we were raised, my dad said, he used to preach all the time on the still, small voice. Do you know what that still, small voice is? Have you heard that still, small voice? Um, maybe you're sitting there and you're going, uh, I want to marry that person. And that still, small voice is saying, mistake. Mistake, 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 because it's what you want. You ignore the voice, and then there's a loud voice that says that was a mistake. As you go some, through some difficult things. If God is guiding us away from something, we are probably not going to agree with it. Because the reason we were going in that direction in the first place is, was, was because it's what I wanted. It's what I wanted. I said it's in Kairos. It's very interesting. In Kairos, people will say things like, or, or this, I brought this up. People will say this all the time. I wish I prayed more. Or I wish I read my Bible more. Or I wish I exercised more. And, 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 and what I told them in Kairos is, no, you don't. You don't wish you exercised more because if you did, you would. You do what you want to do. We say, I wish I didn't do what I wanted to do because I feel bad that I'm doing what I, I, I want to ignore the fact. I want to almost make what I'm doing so much more righteous. Does that make sense? Like we want to make an excuse for why I'm doing what I'm doing, but deep down in heart, my intention was to do it this way. No, you did exactly what you intended to do. Saying I wish to do anything is almost pointless because you're doing what you want to do. If you want to do that, begin to pursue the Lord and ask him to help you to walk in it or change your desires because you're always going to do your desire. That's why he says God will give you the desires of your heart. Ask him to. Ask God to give you the desires for your heart. You say, you mean whatever I want? No, what I'm saying is, Ask God to put in your heart the desires of your life so that you will desire what he desires. It should be a prayer that we pray all the time. God, I know I'm going to do my desires, so God, give me a new set of desires. Change those things in my heart. Make me desire to lead people to Christ. Here's the next one. God speaks to provide perspective. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 is where we walk by faith and not by sight. Not everything that you're seeing is going on, even in the natural. Not everything in the natural is actually going on in the natural. All the time you get a different perspective um, of things. You know, and what's interesting is, um, uh, how many remember the John Benet Ramsey thing? And, and in the media, they were convicted. They, parents had killed John Benet Ramsey. And, and the media was pr proving all of that, that they were killing. Christians were saying they need to arrest those people. Do you know that the parents, uh, John and Patty, were believers? They were born-again believers. And they didn't kill their daughter. And there were believers that weren't hearing from God. They were hearing from the news media and they made their determination on all, what the world was telling them was true when it wasn't true. In the natural, you thought they were murderers, but in the natural, there was a whole other perspective you weren't getting. So you just assumed what you were getting was the truth, and it was lies. Do you know how often the world can shape what you think is true? Because what are you listening to? If you don't know who you're listening to, don't give it credibility. If you don't know who's speaking or where it came from, it came from my brother's best friend's cousin whose uncle was the president of a company that employed this guy who did, who did that job for 10 years with his working partner, who, and that's where I got it from. Oh, really? I'm going to tell everybody that that's true. That's what you're doing. Do you know that they're in technology right now, there are things called bots 
that are designed by fake accounts, people paid to put out social media posts right now. They're created to feed you information that isn't true. You're being manipulated by people you've never met. And the one you say is your savior, we give him no time to speak because when he speaks, he chases out all lies. Truth trumps lies. We're living in a world that faces everything on right and wrong. We need to find out what's truth. Because the world isn't, is, they, they don't want truth. They want what's right and wrong. We need truth. Does this make sense? So we need to shut our mind. Literally, I've talked to three people this week that said they've just shut down Facebook altogether, social media completely. And this is what one of them said, I've never been happier. Haven't been happier in months. It's incredible. And she's hearing from the Lord. Um, 1 Corinthians 2, look at this. Uh, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. By his spirit, he's revealed it to us. You know, there was a number of years ago in a Wisconsin Badger game when they were losing, um, the crowd was full of fans and the Badgers were losing pretty bad, badly. And they would have a bad play or something bad would happen on the field. And the fans in Madison, their fans would start cheering. And they were cheering. And the players on the field were sitting there going, what in the world? Like, that wasn't something to cheer for. That's like me saying, like, the one time on a Sunday morning, I said, yeah, so-and-so died. I was preaching, and I said, and this person had died, and the lady in the second row goes, hallelujah, amen. <laughs> I'm like, she just was really good at doing that during the message. I realized she just threw it in there whenever she was going to take a yawn. Instead of yawning, she just said, hallelujah, amen. For a time, totally wrong. Anyway, uh, th so they're cheering for these bad plays and when bad things were happening on the field, only to find out later that the Milwaukee Brewers were playing in Milwaukee and they were listening on their earphones to the game in Milwaukee. And whenever they did score a run or hit, a, a, you know, or, or get on base or do something great, the fans are all cheering because they're listening to the Brewer game while they're watching the Badger game. Interesting, right? So look at this. So they were looking at defeat, but they were listening to victory. That preaches. We listen to victory even when we're looking at defeat, even when we're looking at things that don't match up to exactly what we want to see. What I'm listening to is victory. I'm listening to life. I'm listening to the word of God. It doesn't matter what I say because he's got the final word. And I need to hear the final word. And if I hear the final word, it will be things that are not as though they are. I may not see faith comes. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But I've heard it. I've heard it. I haven't seen it, but I heard it. So how does God speak? He speaks in a still, small voice. You've got to be listening. If you're not at a point, if you don't ever rest, you aren't going to hear him. You fill your schedule up and you think he's just going to speak, you aren't going to hear him because you're always on your phone. Like I said last week, every quiet moment, you're on your phone. You're, you're constantly filling it with distractions so that you never hear his voice. You're running from that still quiet voice. First Kings 19, and what an incredible story. Elijah, he, he's ministering to, or he's not even ministering. He's, he's uh, uh, in this huge conflict with the, the prophets of Baal. And they're saying there's like over 200 of them and they're crying for Baal to do something. And Elijah is mocking them. To over 200 men he's mocking king ahab is there he is again he's he doesn't believe in god or if he does doesn't think god's around and elijah comes in after hours of these prophets trying to call fire from heaven nothing happens elijah pours water on it till it's overflowing calls out to god god goes 
drinks up all the water, burns the sacrifice. Elijah is at an all-time high. He tells King Ahab, this is God and he is real. And Ahab gets on his chariot and he runs back to Jezebel because he's going to tell Jezebel. And, and, and Elijah's like, finally, this woman's going to get her due. Ahab saw and he gets back there and Jezebel says, if I see that guy, I'm going to kill him. Now, he just mocked 200 and some prophet men, and he's afraid of this woman. He takes off running, and he runs and runs and runs and runs for days. He runs, and he comes to this mountain. He goes and hides in a cave, and this is where we start off in, in verse 11. The Lord said, go out, because he'd been in this cave. He's tired, he's burnt out, he's done. If fire from heaven isn't going to uh, convince her, what's going to convince her, right? And he says, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. for The Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore through the mountain in part and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came fire, but the Lord was not in fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper, a still, small voice. God's speaking to you right now. Over the last number of months, have you noticed over the last number of months, the theme of everything I've been talking about is the voice of the Lord? Can I tell you why? Because there are so many voices in this world and so many voices that you've trusted that have failed you that you, you don't even give my voice credibility anymore. Why should I listen to you? Because you're listening to so many voices. It doesn't even matter that you know me. I told someone, I said, you, you overestimate my ability to influence a body anymore because people aren't listening to me. You listen to people you don't even know more than you'll ever listen to me in a week. Isn't that true? The only hope we have for the church today is if you start hearing the still, quiet voice of the Holy Spirit. It's the only hope. It's the only hope. Because everybody's got their opinions, and their opinions are overriding anything anybody says. If you don't align with me, Pastor, my opinions, I'll go find a church that does. You can't, if I don't agree with you, Pastor, in something, I'll go find something, buddy, that will agree with me or I just won't go at all. It's because the church has stopped listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You need ears to hear. And you better learn to listen or you're going to find yourself in a place where your eternity is not certain. You better get in speaking terms with the Holy Ghost or he's not your personal God. You do not have a personal relationship with him. Does this make sense? You're in religion. And my heart for you is more important than what, whether you stick around or like what I'm saying. People say, why are you so at times brash and things? Because I care more about people than what they think of me. You may not like me, but the Holy Spirit's got to wake somebody up at some point and say enough. Look at how your life is falling apart because you're not listening to the Holy Spirit. Forget listening to me. You're not listening to the Holy Ghost anymore. You don't even know his voice. So how can he talk? And, and it's when you're not listening to him, God tries to raise up people to speak boldly his word. But I don't like his word. Their heart becomes hard and people do what is right in their own eyes. Isn't it true? The Holy Spirit comes. He encourages you. Why are so many people discouraged? Because they're not hearing his voice. Because when they hear his voice, he encourages them throughout the day. He doesn't let them get burnt out and defeated and discouraged and, and overwhelmed because the Holy Spirit speaks to them and he encourages them. He lifts them up. The Holy Spirit speaks to us deep in our heart and tells us that we are God's children. In Isaiah 55, 3, it says, pay attention, come close now, listen carefully to my life-giving, life-nourishing words. I'm making a lasting covenant commitment with you, the same that I made with David, sure, solid, enduring love. You are a child of God. Listen to your dad. 
God loves you. God is proud of you. God's got to figure it out. It doesn't matter what my children do or how they act. They're my kids. And I may be disappointed in their actions because of how it will affect them and some of their decisions, but they're always going to be my children and I'll chase them down to bring them back. That's what your God is doing. But you got to open your ears. You got to have ears to hear. Here's the second. The second this is the second way. Listen, he whispers for, to, uh, whispers warnings. He's whispering warnings. This morning, this is a warning. It, we we made these things. I had a red flag. I got to check in my spirit. That's Christianese for God told me you better stop. You better stop. You better stop. Because where you're going is a pit. You walk any further in this, you're going to fall in that pit. You better watch it. You better stop. They were forbidden in Acts 16, 6 through 7. They were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Why would the Holy Spirit for, forbid them from preaching the word? Because he didn't want them going in there. Because he knew if they did, they were going to end up in trouble. And he didn't need them in trouble. He needed them because they weren't going to do anything there. The Holy Spirit says, I want you to come over here because that's pointless right now. You need to come over here. You're going to get fruit here. He kept them from danger. Most of the danger we end up in is danger we have chosen over listening to the Word of God. And then we blame God for how we got there. He whispers direction. Luke 2, 27 says, He moved by Spirit. He went into the temple courts. Acts 20, 22, He says, And now, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. Maybe the Holy Spirit's saying, Slow down. Slow down. You need to stop. Just, just slow down quit. You just stop for a moment. We keep going. The last one is one of my favorites. He whispers dreams. I've never seen a church, not, not Bethel's Rock, a whole church that has deferred the dreams of God has given them to their pastors. Deferred their dreams, what God wants to do through, to their pastoral staff. You do it. You, we'll push you, pastor. That's not, that's not God's design. God's design is for me to get you to start dreaming again. To have visions. Look at what it says in Acts 2.17. It says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. That's you. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your, your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Are you dreaming dreams? Are you having visions? Because that's what God prophesied would happen in the last days. And we're either in the last days or we're not. But it's time to get the adventurous spirit back. I don't care how old you are. You're really not old. You say, well, I'm 95. You're not old. You're only old because you keep telling yourself you're old. God has an adventure for what your physical body can handle. Amen? So awaken. May your heart awaken. May you hear the voice of God. Because you can be a Caleb at 80 that says, I'm still getting my mountains. God's calling you into something greater. Stop sitting in the seat. Saying, God, I'm just content with where I'm at. The reason you're content is because you're not hearing his voice. Because his voice will call you to something greater. It's going to call you to something more powerful. When you hear, when you say, speak to me, Lord, what you're saying is, go all in. I'm, I'm going to go all in. God, I'm going all in. Give God your best. Make a difference. In 1 Samuel 3.9, it says this. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I think what we need to do today and what Pastor Olivier is going to, how he's, this is going to close, he's going to come up here and close this way. But I'm going to have you all stand right now. What I'm going to ask you to do is just do this, God. Speak, Lord. I am listening. Just say, speak, Lord. Samuel said, this is what Eli told Samuel, when he, when he says your name again, say, speak, Lord, I am listening. 
Right now, will you do that? Will you listen? God, I pray in the name of Jesus, give us ears to hear. Ears to hear what your spirit. Let us hear in the frequency of the kingdom of God. Let us understand we are receivers on earth of what is happening in the kingdom of God, what is happening in the kingdom of heaven, that literally we are the voice, the sound on earth, the sound on earth of what is taking place in heaven in eternity. Speak, Lord. I am listening. Speak, Lord. Say that with me. I am listening. Speak, Lord. I am listening. Now listen to the Holy Spirit this morning.